Hello and welcome to another surging session. How about that? Uh, how about that? I bet you didn't expect that shit to happen yet again. It's every day, pretty much. So today we're going to continue working on the Wang Tile project. That's right. So yeah, we've been working on this project for several days already. And the more I work on this project, the more I want to work on it even further because it's such an awesome thing. <laughs> I didn't expect that such a simple idea would yield such awesome results and it's like really really interesting to explore. Uh, you can find the source code of the thing we're doing uh, in here in the chat if you're watching on Twitch. If you're one of those YouTube uh, people you can find a source code in here. So what is Wank Tiles? Well, uh, Specifically, we're talking about uh, in in this in the scope of the project, we're talking about two colored wang tiles. So they have two colors. So wang tile is uh, a square tile, right? Uh, each side of which can have two different colors. And what you need to do, you need to basically tile an infinite grid, um, maintaining the following restrictions: the tiles with the same color can be only placed. Uh, um, adjacent with the tile with the same color does it make any sense right so uh basically like a domino game right but with the colors of the sides right and uh the cool thing is that uh you can actually make tiles look however you want for example we generated two uh, kinds of tiles uh, so and each tile uh, on its side has uh, one of two colors and if you use these tile sets to produce the uh, to tile the grid they will look like this so this is the result of the first one and this is the result of the second one right so they use the same principle they use the same principle of having two colors on the side and you can also place uh, like the same colors adjacent to each other so and uh, um, the idea of of this specific project is to actually generate the uh, Wang tile grid based on the definition of a sim uh, single function. So this is the function. This function accepts two parameters, something called BLTR and UV. So BLTR is a bit mask, four bits bit mask, uh, each bit of which represents a site uh, in the following order. Um, bottom left top right and if the uh, bit is zero that means that side has one color if that bit is one that means that side has a different color so basically a single four bit mask describes the whole tile uv is a coordinate on the texture of that tile and that coordinates uh, coordinate is normalized from zero to one Right, so, and it's resolution independent because of that. So you can make the tile of whatever resolution you want, whatever uh, ratio you want, these coordinates are going to be normalized from 0 to 1. So, and what this thing does, given these two parameters, it produces the RGB color, the pixel of this tile at that specific coordinate. So you can think of this thing as the fragment shader, the fragment shader, which generates the, the tile, given the tile description and the coordinate uh, of the pixel on that tile so and uh, as a matter of fact uh, both of these tile sets were generated from one single function like that seriously like both of these things were generated from that single uh, shader function so and yeah uh, the entire rendering we wrote a program that performs the entire rendering uh, in three phases first we render the atlas basically the full wang tile set here are the atlases and then we generate the grid basically generating a sequence of these bit masks making sure that they um, you know maintain the constraints how to say what's what's the verb uh, comply to the constraints I suppose yeah, making sure that they comply to the constraints and once we have the um, um, you know the grid and the atlas we're using the both to generate the final image in here right so and this is basically what we were working on for the past like five or four days I don't remember for sure but on the YouTube daily there is a playlist where you can watch the development of this project from scratch uh right so let's go to sorting daily right uh and uh let's go so there is a playlist in here somewhere here is the wang tiles 
Yeah, so here is the stuff. I'm gonna actually put uh, the playlist in here. Wang Tiles uh, playlist. Right, there we go. So what I was talking about? Yeah, we've been developing it for like several days already. Um, so, and one of the things we also implemented, by the way, this entire thing is rendered completely on the CPU. It's a, it's a very important. It's rendered completely on the CPU. We're not using OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX, anything. We're just allocating the buffer of, you know, you know, of bytes. And we're just rendering everything in there. And then we're using STB image to save it as a PNG image. That's it. It's entirely rendered on a CPU, pixel by pixel. Uh, completely handmade. So... And uh, one of the things we did to speed up the whole process uh, of rendering, we actually started to use multi-threading uh, with p-threads and stuff like that. So uh, specifically the uh, atlases, uh, each tile within the atlas is actually rendered, is actually rendered uh, in a separate thread, right? It is rendered in a separate thread. And uh, furthermore, in the future, I think I'm going to do the grid rendering also, also multi-threaded. Uh, maybe I'm going to even do that uh, today. So, and one of the things we implemented while implementing the multi-threaded rendering uh, is a simple profiler, a simple embedded profiler, I would even say. So it's a single translation unit, like 34 uh, lines of code, which allows you to start uh, measuring the time and then stop measuring the time and just see like how much a particular phase of rendering took. Right, so, and this is how we use the entire thing. So, uh, for example, I can s uh, start measuring the atlas rendering, then generate the atlas, then print how much it took. Then I can start generating the grid, uh, then stop uh, measuring, generating the grid and print the summary and so on and so forth. So you see, I can split my code into these sections and profile their performance uh, separately. So, and if I run my program uh, right now, right? So you'll be able to see each and individual face in here in seconds. So uh, for the tile of 64 bits by 64 bits, uh, Atlas rendering took nine milliseconds. So we go up to nanoseconds, right? We measure up to nanoseconds. Grid generation was actually the fastest. It took like nine microseconds. So um, grid generation is actually super, super fast. I don't think we can, we even need to improve it. Right, so the actual grid rendering took uh, less than Atlas rendering, which is also very interesting. But yeah, you, you can see each individual face. And also we have see, uh, we can see phases of uh, generating the PNG input and so on and so forth. And here is the PNG it, uh, outputs uh, that we produced. Right. So, and one of the goals of today is to actually improve this little like profiling tool that we implemented. Because one of the things I want to be able to do, I want to be able to do nested measurings. So essentially, I want to be able to say something like begin clock uh, total, right? So total and wrap all of these things into like a total thing uh, and then end clock, right? So I want to be able to have nested sections uh, and uh, yeah, being able to actually profile. So here's the whole phase took that, but each individual sub phase took this amount of time and maybe even compute the percentages from the, the whole phase. Right, you see what I'm talking about? So I want to be able to do these kind of things, right? And that's going to be the topic of today's stream. Um, does it make sense? Does it sound interesting? I hope it sounds interesting. Uh, Gia, hello. Hello, hello. Um, so, yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. All righty. Mm -mm -mm. So let me actually remove this entire step. Uh, with the global state, yes, we're going to use the global state uh, because uh, the entire profiling tool has to be uh, removable from the source code, right? So, for instance, uh, you have all of these functions, but if you don't define the uh, prof macro, all of these calls like begin clock and end clock are going to be stripped off from the code completely and will never even appear in the final executable, right? So, I want to design this thing... Uh, to be uh, to be able to easily strip off uh, like 
um, yeah, this thing is designed to be easily stripped off from the code. Um, so, and that's why we're going to use global variables for that. So the code itself is never aware that it's being profiled. Uh, to, 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 to. So uh, let's uh, go, I suppose. Let's uh, go. Um, so I think we even have a to do. Yeah, nested time measuring. Nested time measuring. Uh, let me remove that. Let me remove that. And let's um, let's create a branch called nested profiler. Right. So this is going to be nested profiler. And I just realized that we don't really need to have TP end. The the way it works, by the way, when you start a begin clock. Uh, what it does, it saves the current time to a global variable called tp begin, right? And then when you end the clock, it saves the current time to tp end and finds the differences between them and just prints them to you. So what I realized just now, you don't need to keep tp end global because you only need it once uh, in the end clock and that could be simply uh, the local variable here. So there's literally no reason to, you know, have it as a global variable and store anything in there. You know what I'm talking about? So you can just have only begin and a label. And the label is basically the name of the phase you're currently measuring. Right. So hello, Gypsy Glarity, MNV2K, Glitchert. Hello, hello. Mm. 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 Okay, so uh, let's try to recompile the entire thing. The music is actually quite good. Uh, yeah. So here are all of the phases. Uh, I don't think, if you think about it, like saying clock elapsed time, it, like this prefix is not particularly useful. I think I'm going to remove it. Right, so, and without this prefix, um, so you just have timings, right? So this uh, seconds on Atlas rendering, this seconds on that, this seconds on that, and so on and so forth. So how can you enable nested uh, time measuring uh, if you have only one uh, begin, right? So essentially you have begin clock, right? So total, uh, but if you start another clock, uh, this clock will override tp begin and tp label and you won't be able to recover the previous one back this sounds like a job for a stack right so uh we need to actually have a stack of these clocks maybe we, we're gonna even factor out this like pair begin and label into a structure that you could call something like clock right so it's gonna be struct and this is gonna be a clock and the clock will be basically will consist basically from begin and a label there we go so you have a clock um, and then you can have a stack of clocks so something like clock stack so, and uh, the clock stack is going to have a limited capacity. So you need a capacity equal to basically how much you want to nest those things, right? Uh, how much you want to nest those things. Um, and I don't think you're going to nest them too much. Uh, so if I do clock stack capacity, and that capacity is going to be equal to uh, clock stack cap uh, 256 right this is gonna be more than enough I'm pretty sure it's, uh, 256 co clocks is enough for everyone what do you guys think <clears throat> but what about multi-threaded environment uh, we're not gonna be using that within the multi-threaded environment the idea is gonna be the following so you have a function that is multi-threaded so it's parallel uh, parallel so this function spits out shit ton of threads, right? And after it's done, it's gonna join all of these threads. So the function itself, uh, sort of like a phase, we can even call it parallel phase, is going to be single, th it's gonna act like single threaded and it's gonna block, but it's gonna spawn a bunch of threads and then wait on, the, on these threads to finish. So basically it will redistribute the work. And we're gonna measure uh, only that specific phase. We don't really need to measure like what's going on inside. We just want to see with uh, which amount of threads the uh, we, we have the like, performance benefit. 
if you know what I'm talking about. So um, one of the caveats of this profile is going to be like, even though it's measures multi-threaded uh, execution within multi-threaded environment, it's better not to use this thing, <laughs> right? And making such multi-threaded um, profiler is probably a hell with synchronization and shit. So yeah. Uh, so 256 clocks is enough for everyone. In fact, uh, yes. Um, Mm -mm. So uh, there we go. And we need to keep track of the amount of clocks. So this is going to be clock count. Initially, we have uh, zero of them. All right. Mm -mm. So uh, maybe I, I wish the names were not as big. I don't like that this is a, such a long name. I would like to call it CS, but CS is too short. Clock stack is too long and CS is too short. I guess I'll have to suffer. Okay, so that sounds like a plan. Let's just keep suffering. Uh, okay, so I forgot the semicolon and uh, in here when I uh, get this entire thing. Mm, 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 mm. So maybe I can do something like clock uh, C and it's going to be equal to clock uh, stack. Uh, clock count plus plus there we go uh, and this is where we're gonna actually store everything so this is gonna be the begin and then within that thing we're also gonna store the label there we go uh, cool so that seems to be working that seems to be twerking so clock um, incompatible yeah this has to be a point uh, there we go. So, and once we uh, reach the end, I don't think I want to call it TP end. There's no reason to call it like that. So let's just call it end. And in here, I'll also have to get the the, the previous clock. Okay, so this is going to be clock uh, stack, uh, clock stack count, but this time it's going to be something like this. There we go. Um, <clears throat> All right, and in here, if we encounter the begin, it's going to be essentially C uh, begin, and then here we have a C uh, label. And we don't have any boundary checks in here. We don't have any boundary checks in here because this is not Rust, right? This language does not automatically generate uh, any uh, array boundary checks for us, and this is why it is completely unethical completely immoral to program in such a horrible horrible language you're ruining the internet infrastructure for everyone if you program in C and that's precisely why I'm programming in it so since it doesn't generate any boundary checks we have to do that ourselves so essentially uh, what we'll have to do is do that ourselves so we need to assert that the clock start is less than the clock stack uh, capacity, right? And if it's not, we're gonna actually crash telling the user that, well, we you don't have enough clock capacity. <laughs> you don't have enough cock capacity to, to, yeah, to too many cocks. Uh, and in here, we also probably wanna uh, do something like uh, we, we're gonna assert that clock start count is actually at least greater than zero, right? So you're trying to end clock, that means you have at least something in there, right? So uh, let's try to recompile the entire thing and that should be working, that should be twerking. There we go, so everything seems to be working and now uh, I can try to do the total thing, right? Let's try to do the total thing. Mm -mm. What are we profiling exactly in the multi-threaded renderer? We are profiling the time. So my goal is to actually speed up the multi-threaded CPU renderer to the point where I can use it to um, generate the animations of the tiles at 60 FPS. Right. I want this renderer to be feasible in, uh, in used in full HD 60 FPS rendering entirely on CPU. That's my goal, by the way. I think I didn't mention the goal, right? I was saying that we're measuring the time, but I didn't actually say uh, well, what's going to be the goal. Um, eventually, I want to animate this shit, um, right? So we're generating things like uh, grid, right? And for instance, I want to be able to animate uh, the radius of these things. 
Uh, and with multi-threaded renderer, we'll be able to do that completely on CPU at 60 FPS. And I think it's already kind of feasible to do at 60 FPS. Mm, all right, so uh, just a second, I, I need to do the total. Right, so uh -huh. so let's actually measure the whole thing. Uh, so it's going to be begin uh, clock um, total. All right, so here's the total. And maybe I'm going to even do something like this. So here's the first phase. Here's the second phase. Here's the third phase. And I'm going to actually end it here. Right, because I don't want to include the PNG. PNG is not going to be part of the animating, uh, animated renderer. Right, so uh, let's not even include it. I'm going to even comment it out because uh, let's not measure it at all. Right, so let's completely remove that. Uh, okay, so now we have the total phase, we have the Atlas rendering, and so on and so forth. Uh, two, 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 two. So the total is already, by the way, it's a tile 64 by 64, um, and it also renders in, let me see, well, it's almost full HD actually, it's not quite there yet, but it's kind of close, we can try to make it full HD, um, so maybe we can m like print more information about the sizes and whatnot. Right, so here is the tile size, it's a tile size in pixels, right, then we can have something like grid size in tiles, right, so it's a grid size in tiles, grid width uh, TL, grid height uh, TL, and also grid size in pixels, right, I think it's also quite important. Uh, this one is going to be uh, PX, there we go. So, and I just want to see the entire thing. So let's try to make it a little bit bigger now. So if the full HD uh, divided by 64, right, so that means the size in tiles has to be 30, right? If I divide this by 64, it has to be around, let's say, 17. So that's roughly like full HD or something, right? So roughly full HD. And uh, let's just try to run this entire thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So as you can see, we have uh, tile size 64 by 64 pixels, grid size uh, 30 by 17 tiles, and so the full grid size in pixels is basically full HD, and the whole thing took to render 11 milliseconds. Right, 11 milliseconds. So we can actually try to run it several times just to, like, you know, get the feel. Sometimes it's 5 milliseconds, 6 uh, up to 12, sometimes it's 28, so sometimes it could be very slow. Uh, but if you take one second, if you take one second and divide it by 60, so this is how quickly you have to generate your uh, your uh, frame to be to go 60 frames per second. You also have to take into account some other things like sending that thing to some sort of a texture or to like uh, bleed it to the screen or something like that. So um, this thing, your renderer, I think, should not go over 16, but it also needs to have a little bit of room for additional stuff to be displayed actually on the screen. And I think we're quite there. Actually, so we generated like a full HD single frame in like five to seven milliseconds, which fits well into 16 milliseconds, which is needed for, you know, 30, uh, 60 FPS. Does it make sense? Do I have any flaws in my logic? I think this thing is quite usable for like 60 FPS full HD rendering. So that means I can modify the Atlas I can modify the atlas, I can animate the atlas and regenerate the full frame from scratch in 60 FPS. So that's the idea. And th that's why I need the profiler. Because without the profiler, I wouldn't be able to make any of these kind of decisions, right? I didn't even know that it would be feasible to do like full HD 60 FPS until I started measuring the time of each individual phase. Right, because there's also a lot of time taken into account to generate the PNG and I don't know how much time it takes to generate PNG and how much time it takes to do that thing. So it's actually rather interesting. Atlas rendering is run only once. Well, I mean, if I want to animate, for instance, the uh, radius of these blobs, I'll have to constantly regenerate the Atlas, right? So we'll have to constantly regenerate that Atlas. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Do you know about quick fix list and Vim? No, I don't use Vim. I'm sorry. Uh, does the rendering happen on this GPU or the CPU? Completely on the CPU, pixel by pixel, uh, with for loops and stuff. So we're generating everything on CPU, pixel by pixel. Why not uh, 144 FPS? It's 2021. Uh, that's a good question. Thank you for asking it. Uh, so, all right. So I hope I explained my goals well. Uh, so let's continue, I suppose. So, by the way, so the main problem with this nested profile, as you can see, nested profile works quite well, um, but I don't think it's precisely the sum of the previous phases, right? So if we take these previous phases, uh, right, so, and we just sum them up, uh, yep, plus, uh, right, so this is the sum of these things, but we've got uh, the actual total, right? So this is the sum and this is the total, right? So the total is a little bit bigger because it also includes additional things like probably the profiler itself, right? So because profiler needs to, uh, you know, push something on the stack or something like that. But I think this kind of like discrepancy is negligible. So I don't think it's that important, right? So it's like basically the cost of measuring, right? So I, I remember when I was in university, uh, when I was in university and I went to a pretty interesting university rather. So it's um, the, spe the specialization, right? In that university for me was computer science. But it was a computer science in feral metallurgy. And because of that, we had uh, subjects that are related to programming and computer science, plus everything related to feral metallurgy, chemistry, materials, measuring, and shit like that. And we were talking about different models for modeling the process of, um, you know, decarbonization of the iron and stuff like that, and all sorts of things. And specifically, we had a course on um, measurement right on how to do measurement for the process and compare it with the mathematical models that you have right so and one example that they suggest is that you want to measure the the more you measure the system right the more you screw up with the system so this is basically they were this is basically what they were trying to tell us right you have a, a process of that emits the heat Right, and you want to measure uh, at different points of this uh, of this process where how much heat you have at different points, right? And you put, start to put uh, thermometers in different points of this thing, and the more thermometers you put, the more heat those thermometers themselves actually take from the system and screw up with the system. So it's difficult to measure the system without affecting the system, right? So you need to uh, basically choose the right amount of data points to actually gather a useful information and not screw up the system that you're actually measuring. So this is literally the same situation. The more phases of the profiler I put in there, the more I slow down the program. It's literally the same situation, actually, right? I want to measure it, but I can't really easily measure it without screwing up with this thing itself. And this is basically the discrepancy of me screwing, it, uh, screwing with this uh, thing up. Right, so I did some profiling, but it's also slowed it down. So I have to like choose the right amount of data points to gather useful information and not screw up too much. So it's like a temperature, right? Mm. So. <clears throat> so you were a Rust expert before Rust was a thing. Yes, it's a running joke on this channel that I have a degree in Rust. Yes. Um, okay. Mm. The more you log, the more I you have to do. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's basically what it is. It is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Uh, so apparently getting the degree in pharmacology was kind of useful for software development now, because now I can do these kind of comparisons, right? So, I don't know, uh, maybe. Maybe this, maybe it is not, who knows. Um, so the thing is, um, I cannot see um, the nastiness of the uh, of these phases, right? I cannot really tell that these uh, phases are children of those things, 
All right, so for me, there is no really a way to tell that. So one thing we can try to do, I suppose we can try to indent them, right? The, the more these things are nested, um, the more we can indent them. All right, so let's try to do that. Mm, let's actually try to do that. I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, all right. So essentially, when we're printing the entire thing, right, when we're printing the entire thing, we can use the clock stack count as the padding for these things, right? So and more the thing, the more the thing nested, the more padding it is going to have, right? So uh, I think the padding is done like this. So you add this thing. Right, and then uh, we take the current clock stack count, uh, right, and it accepts integer. We have to convert it to integer, it's quite important. Uh, and then uh, I'm gonna add an empty string. So basically what it does, it renders the string with a specific width, right? So I'm saying render a string with the width of the uh, clock stack count. But since I'm rendering an empty string, it's gonna be basically filled up with the spaces. So I think I'm also gonna uh, multiply it by two. So it's actually a single, uh, you know, indentation level is gonna be two spaces, right? And let's see how it's gonna look like. And uh, well, I mean, I didn't recompile everything. I have to do no build run. <clears throat> And there we go. So here it is. Uh, so the total is this and these are the children. Uh, right. And maybe I can do some interesting things where I would say total. This is rendering. Right. And then I can include things like, uh, you know, PNG output. And the PNG output is not going to screw up with the total sum. Right. So I think that's pretty cool. Right. So here are the phases in here. Right. And then this is the sum, and this is the rest of the things, right? Uh, they are not included in the total, but they are still there just for me to know how much time it takes to like produce the PNG uh, frame and whatnot. So that's that's pretty cool. So now we can have nested uh, nested things in here. Maybe we can even go even further and measure some things. For example, uh, in grid rendering grid generation we generate first row and first column separately and then the rest of the things we can measure those as subfaces as well just for shits and giggles just to test our profiler right so we can do something like uh first top row right so then it's going to be end clock right so to be fair right now i'm sticking too many thermometers into my uh, system so it's probably not going to give me that much of the useful information but again i'm just testing uh testing the profiler right so begin cock uh first left go <laughs> right and uh end cock uh right so in here we're gonna have begin uh clock the rest of the tiles uh and then we're gonna end clock right uh, so, and it starts to look like immediate UI, you know? It's like immediate UI, but immediate profiler. Because in immediate UI, you also begin the menu, then begin the item of menu, and so on and so forth. And you have a similar situation, right? Begin clock, end clock, and oh, then you, you gather the summary or something like that. Right, and let's try to run this entire thing. And let's see if it's going to do anything. Okay. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we have an Atlas rendering. Oh, and this one is actually kind of... So the problem with this thing is that it's upside down. You see? So this rendering encompasses like all of these phases. And now you see Atlas rendering and you would expect that these are the subphases of the Atlas rendering. But no, it is not actually. These are subphases of this one. So it's inverted upside down. So it's not particularly that convenient. It would be kind of cool. It would be kind of cool if we could invert them. But we can't invert them immediately, you know, since we are spitting out, right? One of the things we're doing here, we spit out the measurements immediately after end clock. So there's literally no way for us to actually in, like invert it upside down. 
So what I'm thinking is that maybe in, in end clock, instead of spitting it out immediately, we could collect it into some sort of like a summary, right, into some sort of summary and have um, like a special function uh, called print summary that will then print whatever data it collected through the measurements, right? So begin clock and end clock, they don't print anything they only collect the data into the summary and then you at the end of all of the measurements you say print summary and it just dumps a nice table uh, with nested sections and stuff like that and tells you uh, you know what's going on in there and it actually inverted right it's not upside down so it should be readable does it sound good I think it sounds actually pretty good we can even render it as like a table of content in books and stuff like that if you know what I'm talking about so um, so the the recent one that I worked with is, I think, Xlib manual, right? So this is the first thing that came to, uh, to my head, right? So here's the PDF, uh, right? So the, where is the table of content? Uh, I don't remember where was the table of content. Yeah, so we can probably uh, render the summary as these chapters because you can clearly see that they're nested. Then we can pad it with uh, some sort of dots and the measurement could be like here. So we could do something like this, right? So that would be kind of nice. What do you think? So this is basically what I have in my head right now. And I kind of want to have that. Um, so yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> How much of the difference would it make to run this code on the GPU? I have no idea because I haven't run this code on GPU yet, but it, I presume it's going to be several magnitudes faster. Uh, but the fact that I know it's going to be several magnitudes faster actually makes it kind of not interesting for me. Right, so... Uh, does it make any sense? Because the fact that I know, yes, it's going to be way faster than it is on CPU. I already know that. I already know that, so I don't really have to do that. But what's more interesting, can I make it fast enough to render at 60 FPS Full HD on CPU? And that is what I don't know. And that's what makes it interesting for me. Right, I know it's gonna be fast on GPU, like no doubt. People do insane shit on GPU. GPUs are freaking fast. I know that. There's no mystery in here. But on CPU, hmm, can we make it as fast as possible on CPU so we can render it at 60 FPS uh, like without open jail and shit like that? That's what's interesting because I don't know the answer. So we're just exploring. So there's something to explore. See, there's a mist, there's adventure awaiting us ahead. Um, <clears throat> on an old ass dual core even. Yeah, but I don't really have a dual ass CPU. <laughs> yeah, we need a dual S CPU. Okay, so <laughs> old core dual S. <laughs> Why is it so funny? <sighs> All right. Um, so that's that's the idea essentially. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah, I want to actually invert the entire thing. <clears throat> so to invert the entire thing, I probably need to have uh, a summary, right? So I need a summary entry uh, because uh, I might try to actually show what, how I want this entire thing to look like, right? Um, so I'll need to copy paste this entire thing. Uh huh. So. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh man, uh, this is completely unreadable for sure because it's upside down, but not really. It is not really upside down. So if you just put this thing up there, it's already more correct than it was. So it's not entirely upside down. And to make it fully correct, we just need to take the last thing and put it here. And now it is fully correct. I didn't invert everything. It's, uh, it's partially inverted, which makes it even more difficult to read. <laughs> Right, uh, it makes it even more difficult to read. So if I just invert it like that, it's already way more readable than it would than it was. So I probably don't even need too much in here. Uh, but maybe some of the things could be done in here. I could bring the names to 
uh, like swap out the names. Uh, let's actually do that super quick, I suppose. Um, mm -mm -mm. So if I go to the profiler, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just do uh, something like this. Uh, and just a bunch of things like so. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, shit. Uh, well, I suppose it's not gonna be. Oh yeah, I, I, I see what I needed to actually invert. I need to invert elapsed and label, right? So and then I can just take that, and then uh, like this. I think that should give me roughly the thing I wanted to have, so we don't have a summary anymore. Uh, right, and can I recompile the entire thing? Come on, man. All right, so this is roughly what I wanted to have. So now let's bring it to the to the view, right? Uh, this is so trippy. <laughs> uh, all right, grid generation. There we go. And then I want all of these things to be aligned accordingly somehow, right? So. Mm -hmm. So all of that shit has to be aligned. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is roughly the output I want, right? You have the whole rendering and it's super easy to skip to the next step, Atlas PNG output. And you can see the Atlas PNG output is as fast as the whole rendering and then grid PNG output. And it's even slower because the grid is huge and you can easily just ignore this thing. Then if you wanna split the rendering, here is three phases, you can clearly see them, Atlas rendering, grid generation, grid rendering, and within grid generation, you can have like this small thing is in here. So there is like a split. Uh, so this is the goal. Right, and again, with the approach we have right now, where we speed out things immediately, it is not particularly feasible. So we need to first collect this information into some sort of a buffer and have a separate function that, uh, you know, produces this nice output. Mm -mm -mm. Time to change units, why? The units are nice, we have seconds and it goes up to nanoseconds, I think it's fine. So, because the rendering is so fast, we need a resolution of microseconds and nanoseconds. To be fair, I don't really need nanoseconds. Microseconds is fine, I suppose. I think microseconds is fine. Um, each core is called the cheek. <laughs> God, I can do it. Ah, uh, sex. Yeah, there's no reason to change sex. Sex is fine. Sex is a good resolution. Okay, so um, how are we going to do that? So in the profiler, uh, we're going to have... Um, mm -mm. Resolution isn't the issue, but showing MS instead of S would probably be more readable. I don't know. So I prefer my bike shirts to be red. I think it's a, it's a pretty good, bright and cheerful color. So uh, we need to introduce something called the summary, right? And basically I would presume that each section, right? Each section is going to be the summary. So this is the summary. And within that summary, we have other summaries. So now we have a tree structure, right? We have a tree. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? And we're gonna actually store a label. So here is the label of the summary. And within that summary, we'll also have elapsed. Uh, and there we go. But on top of that, on top of that, uh, we also have children. So that means we're going into a very weird territory of having something like summary children, right? Because you can have a variable length, you, have, you can have several children, so that means you need some sort of an array, right? And then you have like a children count, right? So that means you need like a growable dynamic array, right? So that means you need some sort of allocation and so on and so forth. And this is in a profiler where you're supposed to measure performance and this doesn't really sound right for the performance. So we need to like mess with the trees, but at the same time, 
We don't really want to mess with memory too much. I don't want to write my own memory allocator and shit like like that. And I certainly don't want to use malloc and free because they're slow as fuck. Uh, so I'm pretty sure one single malloc could be as slow as rendering the whole fucking frame. It's actually a pretty good question. So how slow is a single malloc? Right, so if I just perform... Um, if I just perform something like, uh, right, so it's gonna be main two, right? Uh, and I'm gonna perform several of these things. Uh, 10, I, at least 10 of them. So it's gonna begin clock, uh, malloc free, right? So this is malloc free, then we end this, the entire thing. And I just do void ptr malloc. Right, and then I free that PTR. How much time will it take, I wonder? Is it gonna be fast or is it gonna be slow? Because I never actually did this kind of measurements, so I'm really curious. Uh, so, okay, so we don't have this entire thing in here. And uh, so it, what it complains about, we don't have, oh yeah. So let's actually allocate, how much do we wanna allocate? Uh, I think we could allocate kilobyte, megabyte, 69 megabytes okay so let's try to allocate 69 megabytes and free 69 megabytes uh, all right and something went wrong here uh in function ld undefined reference to begin and begin end <laughs> nice function <laughs> begin end nice function bro okay come on uh, and it feels like, uh -huh. this is where I have to do that. Okay. It's only need to be done 10 times. It's actually relatively fast. It's actually relatively fast. But if you do this kind of thing several times per second, right. Uh, right. So if I... All right, if I do a lot of allocations, like 100 allocations and deallocations, how much time it will take? It's kind of interesting. I never actually measured how slow malloc and free are. They're pretty, pretty fast. But to be fair, I'm, well, I'm just allocating and deallocating the same chunk of memory. So it probably optimized something and now it allocates this one is way faster. I don't know. I don't think it's particularly useful a way of measuring the thing. So, but that's not the point of today's stream anyway. Mm. Mm. So yeah, measuring this kind of stuff performance is complicated because the allocator can be like a different thing. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do, um, what I want to do, uh, we, I want to um, actually have the summary as an array somewhere, right? So it's going to be summary, maybe in this thing should be called something like entry, right? So we're going to call it entry uh, and mm, yeah, let's call it summary. Uh, and then we're going to have something like summary um, stack, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe just summary as well. And how much we want to have a capacity in here. So do we want to have a different capacity than the stack? Uh, to be fair, right. Since it's a tree, um, since it's a tree, let me let me actually show you. Since it's a tree, let's wait for my paint. Right. Uh, and there you go. So you have something like this. So this is the full section, right? So then you have a couple of subsections, maybe tr three subsections, and maybe you have two subsections in here. Right, and maybe one subsection in here. So you have a tree like that. So how big of a stack do you need to safely traverse this tree? Well, the biggest stack you'll need is the biggest path to the leaf. So one, 
uh, two, three. So we have four elements in here. So we need stack at least four elements. But the summary is supposed to store each individual node in here. So you need a memory to store one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, entries. So the stack could be actually smaller than the memory to store the entire tree. So it's a kind of a, like a different thing. So we can't use the same number for the stack capacity and for the summary capacity. Summary capacity has to be bigger. How much bigger? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So and essentially, uh, what I want to do, um, I want to store the children of the summary as some sort of like offsets within the summary itself right so uh that way i'm like i store the entire summary linearly right i store it linearly and you can see that visually in here this entire thing is already linear right so one two three four five six seven eight nine and so on and so forth and i can just like literally store them in memory like that and then i need some sort of an indication that for example this amount of elements after this one this all of this in here is children of the rendering so one th way i see that is to actually instead of offsets store the size of the section Right, so uh, something like size, right? Uh, let me, let, oh, I get, where is the, there we go. So for instance here, how many lines do we have? We have seven lines, so the size of this section is seven. So if you know the, the index of that section, you know that if you add seven to that thing, you would skip to the next section. All right, so then within this thing, um, the size of this section is going to be one, right? Uh, the size of this section is going to be four. As you can see, there's four lines in here, so this is four. The sizes of these sections are ones, right? Uh, yep, yep, yep. So, and the size of this section is also one, and this one is also one, also one. There we go. And it makes it e super easy for you to actually iterate through that tree. So this is how I imagine we can do that right so i'm starting um rendering this entire section the next row after that section is the child then this is how much i have to add to get to the next child this is how much i have to add to get to the next child and as you can see this kind of approach allows me to not only dfs the tree right dfs in the tree is actually iterating top to bottom Right, so you just iterate this entire thing top to bottom and you already DFS in the tree. But BFS in the tree is going to be just basically jumping by children like that. So it allows you to store everything linearly, easily DFS and BFS. So I, I never actually used this kind of approach in uh, storing the trees and I'm actually really curious how we can do that. Uh, Golden Rage, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic section club. I don't know what was that supposed to mean, but thank you. Um, <clears throat> All right, so uh, we can try to... Does it sound reasonable? This is actually a very interesting approach, I think, right? Because you can store like a pretty branchy tree linearly in your memory. That's actually super cool, right? So, because, yeah, you have a variable amount of branches in here and we're not doing any memory location or anything like that. We're just like stacking everything like on top and we're just maintaining the sizes of the section and the sizes of the sections actually tells us how nested this entire structure is. You see what I'm talking about? So that would be kind of cool, not gonna lie. And this thing. Mm. Graph theory may uh, be can tell you the answer. What is graph theory? I never heard of it. Never heard of graph theory. Mm -mm. All right, so um, let's take a look at this entire stuff. Mm, yep. Uh, you'll have to build it depth-wise to avoid having to shuffle entries around, which is probably fine. 
I'm not sure what you mean. Depth wise, depth wise, probably. Uh, I think to understand how exactly we're going to approach that, we need to actually start implementing because right now this is only like a high level view on the approach. So the more we go into details, the more it will be clear how to implement that. Should the count include itself? It does include itself, isn't it? So seven. It has seven lines. It already includes itself, doesn't it? Maybe I made a mistake somewhere? It looks like it includes itself. Um, no graphs loo emote? I've never heard of this emote. I have no idea what it is. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, implement all of that. So as I already said, I think um, uh, the summary capacity has to be slightly different. Uh, right, so I'm gonna put this thing in here. Uh, summary cap and Let's make like a thousand of them, right? So it's way bigger than the whole stack, right? And it's gonna be uh, Hector HSC. Thank you so much for 100 bits, really appreciate it. All right, so, and maybe we can also have something like summary count. So how many entries in the summary do we have? I, I don't know, I kind of feel like I wanna rename this to entry. Mm. Let's rename it to entry. I don't know. So, yeah. Summary is a collection of entries, right? Summary is a collection of entries. All right. So, how are we going to be approaching all of that? Um, so, mm -mm -mm. Uh, I think I want to make a small break and refill my cup of tea, right? Because I'm already streaming for like one hour and I ran out of tea. Uh, and uh, after the break, we're going to see how we can implement this entire structure. All right, let's go ahead and implement that shit. Uh, so uh, here's a summary and summary count and so on and so forth. So what I'm thinking is that when I start the clock, right, so here is my clock and I'm adding that clock in there. Um, so I think hmm, after I add the clock, after I add the clock, uh, I need to be able to refer back to the summary. So let me let me think a little bit. OK, I'm ending the rendering. That's fine. I'm uh, I don't know the size of the rendering yet. Here's the interesting thing. I don't know the size of the rendering yet. So I'm going to set it to zero. I'm adding the uh, Atlas rendering and then I finish it and I know its size. So and after I pop in off Atlas rendering from the stack, I need to go back to rendering and increment its size by the size of the section. Right. So then after I finished with this section, I also need to be able to go back uh, to this section and uh, also increment it. So I think each individual clock, each individual current clock should also store the pointer to the entry it is associated with. So when the clock is popped, uh, we can update its size. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, pop the clock, uh, pop the clock. So, and how are we gonna start? I think we're gonna start as an index, right? And usually when you store a uh, reference to something as an index, use, use uh, PTR div um, underscore T. So have you heard about this type in C? It's actually very interesting that. Um, someone uh, made Tetris and bias, which is amazing. Uh, uh, have you heard about <laughs> this project? <laughs> Um, so if, if anyone is interested, uh, I develop these things. It's a, it's actually a breakout like game in assembly that works without any operating system and it's built on top of BIOS. So this thing works on top of BIOS without any operating system. And we wrote this thing on stream. Um, so yeah, <laughs> maybe it's not as amazing as Tetris, but it also fits into 512 bytes of bootloader. So it doesn't have any additional stuff. So, uh, and I I'm gonna put that in the description just in case anyone is interested. Uh, so pin pog, right? So maybe I'm gonna, uh, yeah. 
I'm gonna put this as a description. Uh, boom. Ah, there we go. Anyways, uh, so in the profiler, in the profiler, yeah, yeah I, I was about to explain what is a PTR div, right? It's a point, uh, it's an index in an array, but it's basically a difference between the pointers. So it has a semantic meaning of, of a difference between the pointers. And to be fair, the difference between pointers is a, essentially an index in an array, if you think about it, right? And that's why we have this type. Mm -mm. So, and uh, we're gonna actually call it an entry. So it refers to the entry. Mm. To be fair, to be fair, chat, since we're never reallocating the uh, the summary, maybe it would make sense to actually store it as a pointer to the entry, right? Because we're never reallocating it anyway, right? So maybe it would make sense to do it like that. Um, yeah, well, let's give it a try. I think it would make sense. Uh, I think it would make sense. Uh, so now here is the clock. And we also need to have an entry. Uh, entry, uh, summary, uh, summary count. Right, so here's a summary count. Uh, and we take the, the pointer in here, right? Uh, so we get the time, we get the label, and we're also uh, assigning the entry. An entry is basically E. Uh, so within the E, I think, uh, we also need to do the association, right? So it's going to be E uh, label is also going to be equal to the label, right? Here is the label. Mm -mm. So, and because of that, since the label is always stored either in, in an entry, we probably never have to even store it in a clock. That is very interesting. Think about it. Right, so entry stores the label and styles and stuff like that, and the clock only stores where, when it was uh, started to running. And then we refer back to entry, and this is if the clock needs, uh, like, you know, label, it can just do that in from one level of indirection. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so that simplifies everything. So we have label the size originally. Well, size technically, since it includes the uh, the entry itself, size has to be one, right? So size has to be one. And elapsed, uh, yeah, elapsed. I'm gonna, you know, the fuck is that? <laughs> elapsed is gonna be a zero, right? So we're gonna initialize the the whole entry in here. Then. Uh, Right, we're gonna get the clock, we're gonna get its uh, time, and we're also gonna associate it with this specific entry. There we go. Uh, all right, so when I end the clock, mm, when I end the clock, uh, I need to go back. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, this one is actually rather interesting. Mm, 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 mm. So let's imagine, let's imagine that we're ending the gr uh, grid generation clock, right? Uh, we know its size, we know its stuff, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, I'm basically removing that clock from here, then uh, get the end time, compute the elapsed right and funny enough i have to assign the elapsed to the clock entry there we go so i go into the clock i go into its entry and i'm assigning its elapsed and i don't really need to do anything else and on top of that um uh now i have to go to the previous uh, entry right i have to go to the previous entry of the previous clock and update its size. I need to add the size of this thing to that one. But what's interesting is that sometimes you may not have the previous entry, right? So in case of the top level entry, you just don't have a previous one. So we have to first check if you have a previous entry, right? So if, um, so summary, 
Oh boy, so it, actually if you have a previous clock, if the clock, uh, clock stack count is greater than zero, right? If something like this is greater than zero, uh, we can take the previous clock, right? So this is going to be PC, right? So previous clock, we don't have to do minus minus, but we have to do something like this, right? So within the previous clock, we take the, uh, its entry and we take its size and we add in the size of the current clock entry size. There we go. So this is how we are accumulating the, uh, the sizes. So if it's top level entry, uh, nothing needs to be done in here, I presume. So this is basically the entire thing. This is basically this, uh, the entire thing. Uh, and what's fun in, uh, fun in here is that we don't even print anything, so that means the um, the I/O is not even included in any measurements. So yeah, this is actually one of the cool things. So the the problem with the previous profiler is that so it would do an I/O call in end clock, and because of that, it will actually include the I/O into the measurement. So now we don't have any I/O. We just work directly with the memory, and these chunks of memory probably going to be in the cache, so it's going to be super fast. So we're not screwing up with the measurements too much, if you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I think that's that's cool. Okay, and after we collected everything, you're supposed to call print summary to print the summary. So for now, I'm gonna just print the summary as as it is, right? So I'm gonna just go through the entire summary count, right? So this is the entire summary count. Do we increment the summary count? No, we don't. We forgot about that. That's very important. You have to increment it. Uh, so then uh, I'm gonna just print. So we're actually printing it to a specific output. So it's gonna be stream. Uh, and in here we're gonna have the label, then uh, something like this. And it's gonna be LF. Uh, so I think it's like nine. Uh, and there we go. We're not gonna have any indentation for now, right? So, and in an entry, so it's gonna be summary I. Uh, label right so this is the label and then we're also going to have a summary uh, elapsed and on top of that I might as well also print the size of that section right so let's actually print the size of that section I think it's going to be fine uh, I uh, size and that should be it okay let's try to compile the entire thing and see if it compiles if we didn't make any mistakes so far first try first try how about that so now uh, two, 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 two. so after we're done with everything I'm gonna do print uh, summary and we're gonna print that into the STD out you know what I'm thinking actually after you printed summary after you printed summary it would make sense to clean the summary, meaning that we can set the summary count to zero and that will clean the entire summary. So basically, you can collect the profiler information, dump the summary, and then you can start over with the absolutely clean summary. Every time you dump it, it just cleans it up automatically. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I think, I think, is it cool? I think, I think it is. Um, all right, so maybe because of that, it should be something like dump summary, um, right? So dump summary and I almost forgot that uh, you should be able to um, to disable the whole profiler so and when you disable the whole profiler we need to create like a dummy summary uh, in here right so it will basically strip off all of the begin clock and clock and dump summary um, dump summary calls right so and the entire thing is going to disappear from the entire code base Mm -mm. All right, so let me see if it's gonna work. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now? Yo! Okay, it did the thing. Okay, so you have... I think... Wait a second. Well, it's literally like this. So it's 7, 1, 4, 1... I fucking first tried this motherfucker. <laughs> Almost. Uh, yeah, so... Okay, so it's seven, that means if you go seven, yeah, there we go, here is another one, and here is separate things, and then this is one, there's then four, yeah, there we go, this, the sizes are actually on point, look at that, the sizes are on point, um, it's actually super cool. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so the, the idea that means the idea works actually so we can store the tree as basically the sizes of the entry right uh this is actually a pretty cool idea so essentially a single entry contains the size of itself right so that means uh seven means that the entry is this whole thing that includes seven lines that's a pretty cool way of storing tree Is there any name for this trick? Because I literally come up with that trick myself because I was thinking how can you implement this kind of thing in a concise way which doesn't allocate too much memory and so on and so forth. Is there any name for this kind of trees? Or I don't know, there must be because it's such a like, I don't see any other idea on how to store this kind of thing. Uh, cleanly, I mean. Mm -mm. So it's a pretty clean way to store like a tree of entries, I think. Mm. So the reason I'm asking, I know nothing about programming, so maybe somebody who knows programming better than me can tell me what, what, what this thing is usually called. But I don't know. I don't really know. Oh, and what's cool is that uh, we are printing the summary when we're already done with the measurements, right? Uh, that means we can spend as, as much time as we want to make it pretty. We can iterate it several times, trying to find the uh, the biggest width in here right so while knowing the biggest width we'll know how much we have to indent and so on and so forth when we're dumping the uh the thing right uh we don't really care about performance anymore we can spend as much time as we want to prettify this entire thing because the data is already collected uh the data is already collected all right so the first thing uh, we need to do is uh, also uh, put sex in here. So sex is very important because without the sex, we don't know what are the measure means, right? So that's why it is important. Uh, okay, so how can we indent those things? That's a good question. Mm. Mm. Uh, like my boss is saying sometimes, if you take too long, should we hire some programmer to do it? <laughs> that's, a, that's a low key role. Th thank you, Deep Singularity. I think I'm going to remember that. So, the next time I'm going to be somebody's boss, uh, I'll use that on them. It sounds pretty effective. <laughs> Almost a full sex, right? Almost full sex. Mm, all right. So, I think if we want to do the indentations and shit, <clears throat> we have to iterate not linearly. Right, yeah, we have to iterate not linearly, we have to iterate it with some sort of like a pointer and treat that as some sort of a DFS. Maybe we even have to maintain the stack ourselves. But if we don't want to maintain the stack ourselves, we can usually probably, we can probably use the recursion. Why not? Yeah, we can probably use the recursion to iterate this tree. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yep, we can use a recursion. Uh, so here is the thing. Here is the thing. Uh, PTR diff t, uh, and this is going to be our entry. So the entry is zero, and we do know that while entry is less then the summary uh, count, right, or oh, then the summary count. And then we're going to have something like dump entry, right, and you provide the entry. And then we can also provide the level uh, at which uh, we're printing everything. So, and what's cool in here is that uh, the dump entry is a recursive function, right. It takes PTR diff uh, t, so here's the entry, and also it accepts the level, right? It accepts the level. Um, mm, 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 mm. So that means, what do we do? Mm. We need to know the size of the entry, so we're going to have a size, and we're going to take that size uh, from the entry, like this right and while size is greater than zero what we're going to be doing uh, is 
Mm hmm. So this is the this is rather the root entry, right? This is the root entry. Then we're gonna have something like uh, child entry, which is basically root plus one. So that's the thing about it. Uh, and uh, yeah, here is the size. Then we do dump entry child at the level plus one. So to go to the next child, to go to the next child, we have to do child plus summary child size. And we also have to uh, subtract that child size from the, uh, the whole size. So this is the way we step through all of the children, right? So this is how we step through all of the children. Uh, and that should be it. That should be it. And... Um, yeah, well, as we we also need to print the label, right? So we also need to print the label. How are we going to be printing the label? So, um, oh yeah, this entire thing should probably accept the stream. There we go. Mm, so, and because of that, this is the stream. All right, there we go. Uh -huh, uh huh. F print F stream. So we need to pad everything in here then we have to provide the label then something like this and then uh you know lf uh do we need the size in here i don't think we need the size in here so this is going to be just a new line okay so the level is going to be uh, multiplied by two but also converted to integer and this is going to be empty thing then um we have to do summary root um label all right, so this is the label and then summary uh, root elapsed, elapsed, there we go. So that's basically it. Uh, and let's try to compile the entire thing and see if it's going to compile. It does not compile because it doesn't know about PTR diff. This is because it's located in std def. Okay, so let's include std def dot h. Uh -huh. All right, so what do we have in here? This is not a pointer, of course. Uh, silly me, this is not a pointer. Uh, all right, so what do we have in here? This is the child, and the ch uh, yeah, you have to provide a stream. So do we have anything else? This is not a pointer, yet again. Let's remove that. And uh, I think it kind of worked. So summary count, um, yeah, they're unsigned, but I know for sure that the entry is not going to be um oh okay this one is interesting actually mm, so i need to sort of repeat the same process in here so essentially the entry is going to be plus summary entry the size and because of that i might as well probably call it yeah i think this is basically the roots we are iterating through the roots because you can have several of those roots Right, 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 right. So that's what we're doing here. All right. So do we have in here uh, a root? Uh, so because of that, I, I might convert it to here. Uh, so this is the root, and we compile everything. So what we try, we're trying to achieve. We are trying to achieve the padding, uh, the correspond between the um, you know parents and children. So the more nested the entry, the more it should have the padding. So let's see if it's gonna work now. Hopefully it's not going to overflow or anything or go into the infinite thingy. Well, I mean, it went into an infinite thingy. All right. So that was interesting. Um, <laughs> okay. So we tried to do the rendering. So then it went into the Atlas rendering and it didn't really stop properly. Unfortunately, I don't know why. Um, so I suppose maybe the sizes went over the chart yeah i think there's something wrong with the sizes there there is something wrong with the sizes so one of the things we can try to do is actually uh, never do any recursion on the entries so let's just check if we're doing the root uh, iteration correctly, if we're iterating through the roots correctly. So what we uh, try to do, we're gonna try to iterate through this, this, and this. 
So if I don't do any recursion in here, what I'm supposed to see in here is just three entries here, rendering uh, Atlas PNG output and grid PNG output. So this is the only thing I'm supposed to see if I did everything correctly. Let's see. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Is it doing things? Okay, so I have rendering, atlas, and PNG output. As I, uh, as I already mentioned, everything is okay in here. Don't see any problems. Okay, so that means the bug is uh, not in this function. It's somewhere here. All right. So here's the root. Um, we take the size of the root, so it's supposed to be something like this. And uh, interestingly enough, then I switch to the next child. Oh, I see what's wrong in here. So the size of the entry also includes itself, right? It also includes itself. So that means the whole size should be minus one, right? So then while we still have something in here, right uh well still have something in here we print that child then we uh jump to the next child and decrement the size of the child so that should now work right uh and let's just try to run the entire thing and see if it's gonna do the trick and it did there we go so we have a proper indentation when it comes to rendering but i don't see any sex oh because i forgot to put it the second time every time I uh, write this printf, I always forget about the sex. Don't let me forget about it. Don't let me forget about it. It's very important because uh, without it, we don't even know what are the measure means. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so here is the proper indentation. Right, so the whole section is rendering, then the next one and the next one. And yeah, we have a nested structure. Chad, Chad, is, isn't that cool? We have a nested structure that is stored in a linear array right without any anything so a, a, a naive way to store such a structure would be to have dynamic arrays like uh pointers to the beginning the sizes or anything like that here we have just a linear array of entries and the size of a section of the entries and that is already enough to store this tree in a very clean way and very efficiently without allocations or anything like that it's just like yeah this is how we store the tree isn't it cool i think it's pretty pretty fucking cool i really like that hmm um how is it i have no idea i i just came up with it myself and I asked the chat, does anybody know how this technique is called? Do we have any professional, uh, you know, computer scientists that know how this representation of a tree is called? Uh, does anyone know? Um, because I personally don't know. It's just like this is the only way I see to keep it like clean, if you know what I mean. Um, so, I don't know. So I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me. Maybe somebody on YouTube would tell me, right? Because uh, this entire thing will go to YouTube. So if you know the name of this technique, just leave the comment. And um, if you want to, you know, watch this thing in the recording on YouTube, here is the channel, right? All right. So now this is only one uh, step, right? Uh, we, we still want to actually prettify it even further. And I want to sort of align everything like this. So to align everything like this, I must know, I must know the size of the max of the longest line in here, right? Once I know the size of the longest line in here, I would know enough information to ac actually pad the rest of the things. So to know the, uh, the length of the maximum line in here, I'll have to do another iteration over the whole tree, right? I'll need to perform another iteration of the whole tree, uh, which is fine because we already gathered all of the profiling information. So as I already said, we can spend as much, um, you know, as much time as we want to predefine the final results, right? So it just doesn't matter, uh, right? If we're going to do several iterations. Um, all right. So let me, let me see. Uh, so this is going to be the profiler, right? And uh, how can we compute the maximum size? Uh, so we dump in the summary. Mm -mm -mm. 
So maybe the dump entry, by the way, could accept the width of the of the line, right? Something like uh, line width, right? And we could pass then that line width somewhere here. So uh, what would be uh, what's going to be the line width uh, specifically in here? For instance, um, twenty five characters. Maybe we could say that it's going to be. It's going to be 30, right? So this is going to be the, the, the line. So let's actually make it to work like that. Um, I don't remember how you do that. Right. So you want to say that your string in here uh, is going to be aligned like this, right? It is going to be aligned like this. Uh, that means I need to put the line width like that. Right, I think that's how we want to do that. Uh, okay, so in the dump entry, this one is line uh, line width. All right, so do we have anything in here? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now? Yo, no, it didn't fucking work uh, because it actually aligned everything in a different. Yeah, it aligned everything in a different order. So it, yeah, I see, I see what's going on in here. Um, so I don't know how to use that printf uh, pad string string padding in C how to uh, to write pad the zeros using yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm, program how to write pad with the, well not really a write pad um, so it's more of a left pad string. Mm -hmm. It might be helpful to know that printf does not uh, does padding for you using as the formats. Okay, so you can put like minus in here and it will pad it from a different side. Uh, so if I put minus in here, would it pad it from a different side? I wonder. Uh, holy shit, it will. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, but it kind of didn't really do what I would expect it to do oh I know what the fuck is going on because it doesn't take into account into account this thing so that means what I have to do in here is I have to subtract uh, this entire thing right so I have to subtract that uh, okay I see and only then it will actually pad it accordingly right so let's see let's see and there we go look at that beautiful beautiful summary holy fucking shit this is a work of art, uh, so... Mm -mm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Mm. Mm -mm. Hi, I'm Cenobite of Sec, a, mag a magical wizard from beyond. Check out my channel. Okay. Do you have a good channel? Let's see. So let me take a look at your channel. I'm going to review your channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't see any particular Monka TOS shit in here. So let's actually... Let's actually see. Uh, all right, so the, what, what did you got? My name is Alex, been interested in tech since a young age. Uh, elementary school young, experienced in system administration, networking, web programming, focused on HTML, JS, and PHP. Oof, oof. Okay, done an internship for NBA and Cisco. Uh, terminating cables and setting up the endpoint devices. Find me on tryhackme.com. I don't even know what is a tryhackme, but I also worked for Cisco, by the way. But I worked for Cisco as a software engineer. I actually wrote code for them. So yeah, uh, tryhackme, random rooms, website, and system pen testing. Uh, so what is a tryhackme? Never heard of a tryhackme. Uh, what is this? It's a cybersecurity training. Cybersecurity training. Okay. Uh, people also ask 
Is try hack me good? Overall, I enjoyed using this platform to enhance my cybersecurity skill. It sounds like a, you know, this, <laughs> this ad. Enhance your cybersecurity skills with one single pill. Uh, so, there is Cisco in Russia. No, there is not much Cisco in Russia, but I work remotely for them. Uh, so, I don't know. Eh. You, you may want to actually add more things into your channel right if you you know if you want to like gather more followers or something like that some panels in here that link to a profile on github for instance you have a try hack me profile uh so i'm not sure if i want to go to that website so i'm actually kind of scared to go there because I, what if the hackers will hack me so there's not that much information in here so it's kind of eh you can probably follow that person. They're trying really, really hard to promote themselves, but I don't know. So I guess there's more things you can do to promote yourself rather than spamming in someone else's channels. For instance, do make something good. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, so let me let me see. Was code, uh, code quality good enough in Cisco? Of course not, it was shit. <laughs> That's the point. Uh, they actually paid uh, quite well. They paid quite well. And when a company pays quite well, their code is shit. So, and that's the reason why they pay quite well. <laughs> so, nobody pays for a good code because it's easy to maintain. Uh, so, um, that's kind of the point. That's kind of the point. Mm, cyber enhancing spills, yeah, exactly. Uh, anyways, so do I want to actually put some dots in there? Like, is there any way for me to customize how exactly, uh, you know, I pad everything? Um, so let's actually do printf uh, pad string. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So string formatting pad left. Um, mm -mm -mm with zeros using printf so they already discussed it but um i want to do that with a specific character if you know what i'm talking about so you can put a specific character so this is like a okay padding uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh they're just okay they're probably using like different things in here um you know what i'm thinking you know what i'm thinking i think i'm not gonna bother because spaces look all right so what do you guys think i think spaces look fine um right so they look fine and see anything wrong with that so it would be even cooler to put some sort of like a total thing in here um begin clock uh total uh right mm, so this is something like this and here we're gonna do and clock right and clock there we go and then we dump the summary uh do we need to generate dream seed what's wrong with that all right so let's take a look so it's gonna have more information now uh... <laughs> okay uh that was really interesting but okay oh shit bruh why did it happen i have no idea um so let's take a look uh it actually went yeah it went off the charts so that's really strange hmm so that means there is a bug in there somewhere and i wonder why didn't we see the bug before uh it had more information for sure yeah that's true <laughs> kind of kind of sus not gonna lie truly truly sus uh so let me see yet again i'm gonna disable this entire thing right we want to catch as many bugs as we can uh yep 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 and it only printed the total right so that should be fine all right and then i do plus size and this entire thing should eventually go over the summary count um mm -hmm. and that was fine as well so i'm not quite sure why 
it actually went over the roof. No, it's kind of it's kind of strange because now um, we can also print the size of the section just in case for the uh, you know for the for the debugging purposes. Uh, right for the debugging purposes, this is going to be something like summary root size of the section. Right, and let's just let's just go. Let's just go. So there's a 10 of them, right? Which kind of makes sense, right? Probably. Does it make sense? Maybe. <laughs> so let's actually go into the debugger. You know what? I think the time has come. The time has come to go into the debugger waga. Uh, debugger uga. <laughs> Uh, so this is gonna be how is it called it's called wang tiles right so this is the wang tiles I'm gonna do build the GDB right it will automatically drop into the debugger then we're gonna br uh, break on dump uh, summary right so we're breaking in here we're running the entire thing so that created a bunch of threads and there we go we have that shit so if i take a look at the clocks uh actually clock stack right so here's a clock stack we have some bullshit in here but the clock stack count is supposed to be empty it's supposed to be a zero there we go so then we can have a summary count and in summary count we have precisely 10 of them uh all right so and if i take a look at the summary itself we have a lot of things in here right so here's the total rendering atlas uh here are different uh things in there in there and um everything seems to be fine all right so uh let's actually go into the dump entry uh i think i stepped and eh? All right, so uh, that looks fine. So here's the root, uh, right? So then we took the size, might, might as well actually display the root, then display the size and then uh, display the child. So child has been optimized away. Oh shit. Uh, so I wonder if that's gonna affect anything, huh? That is really, really interesting. So maybe it, it's now stored somewhere in the register or something like that, but yeah. Huh. Uh, okay, so let's actually go ahead. Oh, well, I mean, right now it is not optimized the way. Okay, size is fine. Um, so we dump the whole section in here. So here is the rendering, right? And then here is the child and the size is subtract that. Well... I already see the bug. So we're supposed to be taking the size of the current child. So, but we updated the child first and then, okay. Uh, what does optimized out mean? So the compiler can perform all sorts of optim optimizations on your code. It can rearrange the code. It can remove some of the variables and stuff like that. Uh, so the whole point is that the compiler tries to make your program go as fast as possible uh, without changing its behavior, right? And uh, by rearranging the code, it tries to maintain the same behavior, the same outcome, uh, but it will go faster. Sometimes it would move some of the variables from the memory to a CPU register so it doesn't try to read and write into the memory so it's a little bit faster like that and since the compiler done that so for the debugger there's no information about that variable anymore so the, the debugger will tell it's optimized out uh, so yeah that's basically what's going on uh, but I found the bug by the way so it was actually a good idea to actually step through that uh, okay because the first thing we want to do, we want to subtract the size. Yeah, so the bug was actually a different order of these things, right? So first we subtract in the size and only then we change in the child because after we change the child, the child is going to be completely different. So that was the bug. That was essentially the bug. And you have to be super, super careful when you're working with this kind of shite, right? So uh, you have to be super careful. Um, so something went wrong. Let's take a look. So... Um, so 
probably want to remove that thing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, look at that. So now we have a total time. Uh, total time took 26, but it doesn't really matter because the only thing I care about is the rendering. And the rendering in this particular case was 8 milliseconds, right? It was 8 milliseconds, which is still less than 16 milliseconds. And that's precisely what I want to see in here. That's precisely what I want to see in here. This profiler is fucking awesome. I'm telling you. This is so fucking awesome. I really like it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the thing is, uh, I just guessed the line width of the entry. I just guessed it. I just set it to 30. If I set it to twice as that, it's gonna actually screw up everything, right? Uh, yeah, so as you can see, it doesn't work even properly. So the thing I wanna do now, I wanna do two iterations, right? So the first iteration will go through all of the entries and figure out the size of the maximum, uh, you know, maximum line. And uh, then uh, we're gonna use the maximum line to render the actual thing. PNG out is taking almost all of that exactly because it needs to compress the PNGs and shit like that. You see how useful it is to have this kind of thing, right? If I never actually wrote this profile, I would never know how fast my renderer is. And since I didn't know how fast my renderer is, I won't be able to make interesting decisions like an attempt to maybe uh, render this thing at 60 FPS. Now I know that it fits precisely into 60 FPS frame uh, time frame, uh, and the most of the time in here is just saving PNG, right? And if I'm gonna render that in real time, I'm definitely not gonna have a PNG in here. So it's quite important to have that. So PNG out is a single thread, probably, but it doesn't matter because PNG is only used to just uh, tell us what the renderer did. So we just want to see the result of the renderer and here it is. Right, so it's not really part of the like, renderer itself, it's just the output of the renderer. Right, so we don't really need to speed it up. Right, it's just a debug information. Right, the, the PNG dumping is just like a debug. Right, so that's why the performance of this entire thing doesn't really matter. Right, and so also disk uh, IO is very slow. So, but just to emphasize that it takes a lot of time, I just put it into the measurement anyway. So, but now I can just skip all of that and see what's the rendering. Rendering is actually super fast, uh, relatively fast. Um, actually, the smaller you make the um, the tiles and stuff like that, the faster it is going. It's going to be, right? If you have like very small tiles, 16 by 16 and the grid is just five by five, right? It's gonna be even faster. So the rendering is probably gonna be, yeah, one millisecond, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> so, uh, but the image it's rendering is actually, so yeah, that, that's the final image we're rendering, look at that. So it rendered this, fi it, this final image in one millisecond, super, super fast, <laughs> uh, right? So, well, it's still, well, I mean, here is the rendering is this, so we have to look at the rendering. Uh, so we definitely can do that at 60 FPS. Sometimes it's even below one millisecond. Look at that. Sometimes it's even below. And by the way, so we can remove probably this thing, like first top row is not really that, that useful. I just put it in here just to, you know, um, test the profiler or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a very cool thing. I really like that. It's very useful. <laughs> it would be nice if it's sorted in desk time. Uh, it's sorted in execution time. Right. So, yeah. So, first we executed the rendering, then Atlas PNG, and then uh, Grid PNG out. In my case, I kind of want to see them in the order of execution, right? Because that's, you can go top down and this is exactly how it was executed in here, right? So then you can see what parts do you want to optimize. Mm, the fastest part of the rendering, by the way, is grid generation. So it's like very, very fucking fast. Oh shit. Grid rendering here is also fast. By the way, so this is, uh, let's go back to, uh, you know, full HD, right? Mm. 
Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so in full HD, uh, it takes a little bit more time than usual, yeah. Uh, but I think we can still try to optimize. Also keep in mind that I'm streaming. When I'm not streaming, it's actually way faster. Uh, again, so I need to finish the profiling uh, pretty fine because um, we don't calculate the uh, width of the lines properly. We don't calculate them, but we need to calculate them. Uh, so how can we do that? Um, I can do something like render uh, render summary, right? Which will accept file stream, but it also will accept line width, right? So and essentially this entire thing becomes the render summary, and uh, this is the line width. Uh, okay, so this is line width. There we go. So and what I want to have in here is essentially something like estimate line width. Right, uh -huh. so this is going to be size t, uh -huh. size t estimate uh, line width, and what we're going to accept in here, I think we're not going to accept anything in here, but we can accept actually the root, ptr diff, yeah, I think it will, uh, what if we have several roots, okay, so we're going to accept nothing in here. Uh, <clears throat> so, and the first thing we do in here is, uh, estimating the line width. Here's the line width. Estimate line width. And after that, we render the summary into this uh, stream with the estimated line width. There we go. So we have two phases. We have first iteration, we uh, trying to measure how big this thing is going to be. And then we're using that size to render, finally render the entire thing. So the way we're going to be estimating, we're going to be again iterating over the roots, right? So this is going to be the root. Uh, and uh, so I might as well actually copy paste the entire thing because the iteration is rather similar. Uh, so line uh, width initially is going to be zero, right? Then we call estimate estimate entry line width where I provide the entry. So what is zero? I think it's a level. Yeah, we do need to provide the level, and I think that is it. Right, and it will return you a new line width. So we can call it something like entry line width. Uh, right, and if that entry, entry line width is um, greater than our line width, we're gonna be reassigning it back to entry line width. So we do another it, uh, recursive iteration of all of the things, and we're just collecting the maximum of all of this stuff. So uh, estimate entry line width uh, is going to return size t as well, but here it will accept the uh, root and the level at which it's doing all of that. And we're gonna mirror the uh, dump entry. So since I have render summary, maybe this one should be called uh, renders, uh, render entry. Right, render entry. I think that makes sense. Uh, okay, so in here we do a very similar thing. I'm going to even copy paste the entire stuff. Right. So I'm starting with that, then I'm starting with that. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. I suppose the line width that we expect in here, right, the line width is going to be essentially a level uh, multiplied by 2 plus the summary root label the size of that label. There we go. The size of that label. Um, okay. <sighs> After that, uh, we do entry line width yet again and if that entry line width is greater than the line width we have in here uh, we are going to be uh, setting line width to the entry line width and then we'll have to return the final uh, line width from here there we go so in here we also have to return the line width uh, there we go. So I hope I didn't make any mistakes in here. Let's try to compile. Uh, okay, so we did uh, some mistake in here. So this is the render entry. Uh, anything else? So here is the stream. Uh, okay, so when I'm estimating, right, I don't need to call any of this stuff. I need to call only this and this. And this is basically estimate 
uh, entry line width. Uh huh. So is it gonna compile? I hope it's gonna compile. And let's just try to run the entire thing. Hopefully, it's not gonna do too much. Okay, it kind of worked. Uh, so, uh, but it actually, yeah. So it, it would be nice to have like a couple of characters of padding uh, in here, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So it precisely calculated as it should be. So it's it's totally fine. It actually did really, really well. Uh, but I suppose now it would be nice after we estimated this entire thing. Let's actually add a couple of characters for the line width in here. You know what I'm talking about, right? So it just doesn't stick with the uh, with the final time in here. Right, so, and uh, where is the compilation? Oh, fuck. Uh, I should probably do something like this. Um, so let's go in here and let's just run the entire thing and hopefully it will look fine. Hopefully. There we go, so now it looks fine. And now it's independent from the exact uh, length because if, if you have different lengths, it will adjust everything accordingly, if you know what I'm talking about. Right, it will try to adjust things accordingly. Um, so now I can try to get rid of the useless measurements, like for example, computing first top row. Uh, we don't need that. The only reason I added that is just I wanted to test our profiler. Uh, right, so I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna remove that and it's not gonna be included in the final thing Right, and let's see and uh, as you can see it actually recomputed properly now. So everything looks okay So that's pretty cool um, Yeah, we have nested computations and uh, they look quite nice. They look quite nice. I really like this profile, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. And the fact that it's so simple, right, so it's just like 139 lines of code, right, it's super simple. And at any time, by the way, uh, in your build, you can just simply disable that, right, so when we build the thing, uh, yeah, I might just disable the whole profiling process, right? So here you go. So if I try to run the entire thing, uh, the entire code for the profiler should be stripped off now. There we go. So there's no profiling anymore. It was literally stripped off from the source code. Uh, so if you take a look at it, right? So if this thing is not defined, this is what you're calling. So every begin clock, end clock, dump summary, they're basically stripped off and they don't exist anymore. Um, that's basically how it works. Yep. So, but then you can enable all of that and we'll start measuring things. Uh, right. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay. And that's pretty pog. That's pretty pog. Uh, so let me, let me do a committee committee so we don't need that stuff. Uh, do I have the to do for the for the thing I'm doing right now? So I think yeah, nested time measuring and I literally implemented it now. Uh, another interesting thing, I think I forgot to also do boundary check for the summary in here. Uh, so I think I need to assert that the summary count is less than the summary capacity. Right, so it's quite important. So if you have too many clocks and summary overflows, you're not gonna have a good time. That's for sure, for sure. Um, all right, so let me test it one more time. Mm, and I'm gonna create the pull request. Oh, nice, it's sec faulted. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh, I know why it's sec faulted. Okay, copy paste it by the way. Alrighty, um, so uh, let's do a committee committee. Mm. Implement uh, nested, um, I don't even know how to, how to say that. Improve, improve uh, time profiler. So nested uh, clocks, um, readable, readable summary. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So this is basically the things we implemented and I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Uh, I think I don't even have a CI. She, I don't have a CI. God damn, bro. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through my process uh, anyway. So um, yeah, so I just need to merge it. Mm -hmm. 
cool. So now we have a pretty powerful tool to make our render faster and uh, make it also real time. So I think I'm going to end the stream here. Right. On the next episode, what we're going to do, we're going to use this profiler to speed up uh, each individual part of the render as much as possible. Like, and we're also going to add more control over how much threads we allocate and stuff like that. And after we've done that, we're going to try to hook up our renderer to something that can actually display the frames. Since I'm doing everything on CPU, I want to actually use as little dependencies as possible. Initially, I wanted to use SDL, but SDL still uses OpenGL under the hood. So I was thinking that I could probably send those frames into SDL texture, but SDL on my machine literally uses OpenGL texture. So it would be nice to actually do everything on CPU. So my idea is that on the next stream, I'm gonna actually render into X11 PixMap. So the idea is gonna be using X11 PixMap. Uh, right, an X11 pix map is basically like some sort of a back buffer into which you can push the uh, the pixels, and this is precisely the mechanism that we're going to try to use to render this thing in real time and animate in real time. So that way, we for sure not using any hardware acceleration or anything like that. So uh, yeah, so that's going to be the plan. Uh, X11, like specifically Xlib, is a rather pain in the ass to work with, uh, but I actually researched a little bit how to do this kind of stuff, so uh, I think that should smooth out the uh, the pain a little bit. All right, that's it for the day. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good one, and I see you all next time on the next episode. Check out the source code of the project. You can find it in here. If you're watching it on YouTube check out the description here is the source code here is the playlist of the entire series and if you are watching on twitch check out the youtube channel where we have an archive of all of these streams right so yes that's it for the little thanks everyone for watching i hope it was interesting it was definitely interesting for me i tried out a new data structure that i never tried before and it was actually kind of pogue so yeah thanks everyone for watching i love you Mwah.